so I will introduce you uh, how we can use AI to improve epidemiological uh, modeling. I will not focus uh, more specifically on uh, infectious uh, disease during all this presentation, but I will show you how my uh, journey uh, influenced my research today regarding uh, epidemiological uh, modeling and more particularly uh, infectious uh, diseases. No, so how I'm going forward. Yeah, so uh, three parts. The first one, uh, I will uh, remind or uh, will focus on the definitions of AI and epidemiology uh, in my specific uh, framework. I will give you some examples uh, regarding epidemiological modeling from the uh, genomics uh, my beginnings in the genomics uh, field until today with uh, natural language processing uh, and more, and I will share you also my uh, vision. So uh, at the uh, mid of the, the last century, Mark Carty has defined uh, AI, he was the first one using this term, as the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. So we were in an area where machines were for industry and more mechanics. Today, we are looking at AI as some science, as some way, allowing us to plan, to uh, reason, and to, uh, to learn uh, on data, on, uh, on data at large, meaning text, voice, and more. So when we are looking at AI, we need data. We, if we are looking at uh, health uh, and medicine, we are collecting data from the electronic health record. Today, and we, you will see uh, also uh, further in, in this presentation, on social media, on uh, the internet of things, with your uh, smartwatch, with your smartphone, with sensors uh, all around you, with robots, surveys and questionnaires that you are getting each day uh, by mail, for example, and from the literature, the scientific literature. More, when we have this data, we need, at the beginning, without uh, going too much deeper, to start some analysis with statistics and probabilities. And then, this is giving us some support to go forward with machine learning, with uh, data science, which also includes uh, partially uh, statistics and probabilities, and then the more complex tasks that we have finally with AI in healthcare is to communicate, to share our results with the professionals, with the patients, with the grand public. So if we are looking now at uh, the definition of epidemiology according also to uh, the CDC, uh, the epidemiology has for uh, aims to find the cause of uh, health outcomes and disease in populations, meaning that in contrast with the clinician, which is working only on a patient, on an individual, with the epidemiology, we are looking at a world population. We are not looking and not taking into consideration only the individual. And for looking at the population, we need, again, data, like I pointed it out uh, before, with uh, with a lot of details, sociodemographic uh, details, biological healthcare details, and more will go uh, further. And with this data, we are able to define trends of uh, health behavior, of social behaviors uh, influencing health, for example. So now, if we are looking uh, at all this data, and when we want to look more particularly at uh, health data science as a part of uh, AI, uh, AI, we need a very large amount of data. We need, as I said uh, a few seconds ago, demographic data, socioeconomic uh, data, medical and biological uh, data, and today we need more. We need to know how the patients are communicating with the healthcare professionals, uh, how uh, we can share with them some professional knowledge uh, like we uh, did during the uh, COVID-19 epidemics. And more, 
We need also data today from social media, how patients are uh, looking and understanding the knowledge that we are sharing with them, to understand their fears uh, and their understanding of what's happening around them more. Uh, and now we are in also uh, a new era uh, for, for the last years. We are getting a lot of data from IoT, from the Internet of Things with, again, uh, a lot of cameras, of microphones uh, located everywhere uh, with our smartphones uh, say, uh, sharing our location, uh, more the smart watch uh, and so on. So when we are integrating and want uh, to investigate this data, we are looking from an epidemiological perspective at the combination of statistics, probabilities, machine learning, deep learning, and more, so the health data science, and we are producing knowledge, new knowledge, meaning that we are able to support the medical, the healthcare decision uh, makers with some new inputs. I will go forward with this, but the, again, the main challenge when we are sharing our discoveries as uh, epidemiologists or medical informaticists uh, with the uh, decision makers is to share them, uh, to share this uh, knowledge with them in a very uh, or the most uh, as possible, uh, easiest way as possible. So now, some examples, and uh, I will take you uh, two decades ago uh, in these examples. So on the uh, left side, you can see a paper that uh, I published very late uh, on my uh, PhD and it, it, its extension uh, then, uh, where we worked on uh, genomic data that we were with uh, the, the team that uh, I worked with in Paris, the first that integrates uh, that we integrated clinical data and genomics data for predicting the impact of uh, a diet or of a bariatric surgery on obese patients. Uh, so uh, we worked on, for this time, a lot of data. You, do you, uh, you need to, to understand that uh, we had very large files of some megabytes today, nothing, uh, with the expression of uh, 40,000 genes, and we had, miraculously, uh, 40, 40 patients. So huge data for uh, this time. Then, uh, on the left side, uh, on the right side, you can see how we saved some research with uh, uh, researchers uh, at uh, the Hebrew University and uh, Adassa uh, Hospital, when we saved how we saved research on uh, multiple uh, sclerosis research by using machine learning. Uh, with statistical, uh, or with biostatistical approach, uh, they failed to discover some biomarkers. And with, in this uh, research, by using clinical data, so, uh, demographic data about the patients, and the expression of genes, we understood that we have some genes that allow us to know which patient will, uh, or that can uh, get the right treatment at the right time. And we discovered that we are able to do this in this population only on men and women after the uh, menopause's uh, age. So that's the first thing. And then I moved uh, from academia to industry. I got a lot of experience uh, in the advertising industry, in uh, an industry not uh, basically, from my perspective, connected to healthcare. And when I uh, decided to, to come back to uh, the, the healthcare research, also I started to focus on wearables, on uh, communication data, and what we know today also on exposome data, meaning that what is around us. And this is allowed me to have an other understanding 
or an other uh, perception of what we can analyze. So when I uh, started my journey, my back to uh, healthcare research, I started by investigating data on ADHD uh, patients, children, uh, with classical approach of biostatistics. It took us uh, more than two years to analyze of all this data uh, to make some survival analysis uh, for, for these patients. And on the second end, we decided also to analyze the same data with machine learning approach here and hierarchical clustering, and we detected three main clusters, meaning that we discovered exactly the same trends uh, in three months that we detected uh, with two years of work with classical approach. And if we are going forward, this uh, research uh, has been done in uh, Clelit at the Clelit Research uh, Institute. And when we are looking at HMOs, healthcare management organizations like Clelit, like Maccabi uh, in Israel, we are able to get a large amount of data, clinical data, biological uh, data, and so on. And I decided to look at the interactions between the patients and the HMO from any uh, point or from any perspective, meaning how you are uh, appointing, uh, uh, how we, uh, you are, sorry, uh, how we, you are appointing uh, to the doctor or to the nurse if it's uh, by uh, using the website, an application, if you are calling a call center or visiting the clinic, how we, you are uh, re renewing uh, your prescriptions and more. And then after a couple of years of work, we got all the data. And here it's an example. We detected uh, 30 uh, groups or kind of patients, uh, of diabetics patients, and we understood how they are interacting uh, with the HMO. For example, you can see at the middle uh, that we have patients that are interacting mainly with the nurses. And after looking at the data, we discovered that this population is uh, mainly from the Arab sector and with a low uh, socioeconomic status with a relatively correct uh, clinical status. Uh, and we got the explanation from experts that it's something well known uh, for, for the Arab sector that uh, patients are visiting the nurse anyway before visiting the physician. On uh, the left side of uh, this, uh, this uh, hierarchy, we detected also clusters of people using a lot of data, uh, or uni uh, not a data, uh, using a lot of uh, channels, of electronic channels, a website or an application. And surprisingly, we detected, we uh, saw that these people are old people, the elder people in the population. Looking in the data, we understood that these people are not using by themselves uh, the website or the application, but they are using, uh, or the one using on their name, uh, this technological uh, framework are using them at the weekend. So we understood that, that their children, uh, for example, are using, are reserving, are appointing uh, to the, uh, making appointments, uh, scheduling appointments to the nurses, to the physician at the end of the week, or asking for uh, prescription renewal. Uh, more and now, uh, without looking at HMO data, uh, and it's an other perspective of how we are looking at uh, healthcare data and epidemiological modeling, uh, during the COVID-19, we run with uh, Anat uh, Hatsubi, one of my uh, master students, uh, research for, at the beginning, trying to understand how people are vaccinating against influenza yearly. We started to uh, extract data from Twitter at the end of December 2019. So before the, uh, before the pandemic. And during the pandemic, you can uh, see there that we have collected a lot of uh, 
of uh, tweets related to vaccination, to influenza, uh, to antivax. Uh, and slowly, we got a lot of uh, messages including or related to the COVID-19. By using uh, also clustering approach, we detected uh, three kinds of tweets uh, in more than or around three million of, uh, of tweets. The first one with messages related to health and medicine. A second cluster overlapping with the first one related to protection and responsibility, meaning that these people are publishing messages uh, that they are saying there that they are, this is uh, their responsibility to vaccinate or to not vaccinate, or this is uh, important to protect their families. Uh, and the third cluster, not less important, it was an, uh, uh, a strategic, a very important year for, uh, in the US with uh, the presidential elections, uh, a lot of tweets related to the impact of vaccines and the COVID or the origins uh, of the pandemic uh, and the, the, its links to, uh, to politics. So uh, it's a first aspect based on tweet data and language processing. And then, in parallel, we also run uh, a survey in the US. We collected around uh, 1,600 uh, answers, and we have been able to build a decision tree, allowing us to confirm also what we detected with uh, the tweet analysis. So we detected globally uh, profiles of people that are vaccinating because they are feeling that it's a civic responsibility or not, vac not vaccinating because they are thinking that it's also a kind of responsibility. Then people that are confident in uh, the pharmaceutical industry, people with children and people that are simply uh, feared by uh, the pandemic. So this research is, or these two last research are really important to understand that epidemiological modeling, it's not only uh, building uh, SIR models or more, it's also looking at the uh, population behavior. Uh, and this research, these two research, uh, allowed us to take, and uh, the next speaker, uh, is related to, to this work, we decided to take all the tweets that we analyzed and to look also at the CDC data about the spread of uh, the pandemic. And we defined different behaviors uh, in the population, wearing a mask, uh, respecting the social distancing, vaccinating, and more. And we built a model allowing us to communicate with the decision makers what will be the impact on the different subpopulations uh, of the respect of the different uh, recommendations such as wearing a mask or uh, respecting the social uh, distancing or uh, to vaccinate. And now uh, some novelty. Uh, and with this I will conclude. Uh, I and you have the references here, and it's something from my perspective important for epidemiological modeling today. We defined a few uh, years ago with partners uh, at the European Federation uh, for Medical Informatics a new field of research uh, called One Digital Health. One Health is a field allowing to or supporting for now more than two decades, investigating the links between uh, human health animal health and environment. And from the second side, we have the digital health. When we are combining both, we are able to understand and to how monitoring, for example, uh, populations of humans, of animals, or the environment can have an impact on the others. And here, it's the most critical point from my perspective for epidemiological modeling. We defined one year uh, ago uh, how data must be fair in the One Digital Health framework. Meaning the fair, it's not the uh, English word, but uh, it's mean findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. And when we are making epidemiological research, we need 
to be able to find easily the data, to be able to access to the right data at the right time when we need them. Uh, interoperable data, because if we are looking at the uh, Israeli ecosystem, we have four uh, HMOs, four health management organizations. We have the Ministry of Health, and all these uh, institutions are not able to easily share their data uh, in time of crisis, like for the HMO, it's, it can take time. So when we are looking at an epidemic uh, involving humans, involving animals, when we are looking at the climate change impact, we have here a big issue. How we can integrate all this data to allow the decision makers to take the right decisions. And to conclude, and the take home message from my side, we defined what's AI and it's something relatively complex. We have today access to a huge amount of data, also from uh, the HMOs, the social networks, and uh, the IoT. And when we are combining the AI uh, approach with uh, the epidemiology, we can improve the epidemiological modeling not by only building uh, survival, uh, so, sorry, susceptible uh, infected or uh, and recovered uh, models, meaning we will survive, in other words, uh, or by looking, uh, we, so, sorry, only looking at uh, SRI in a classical way, but we need to look at a large amount of data, a complex, uh, at complex data uh, in different ways, allowing the decision makers to look and to take a decision. And now, from my perspective, we need to take uh, the epidemiological modeling at the next step to look uh, at new, uh, from new, uh, sorry, from a new systemic perspective, meaning by using the one digital health approach, because if we are looking at the COVID-19 pandemic, it involved uh, animals, humans, and also uh, we had uh, uh, hypotheses that the uh, cl climate change or the climate can be involved there. So thank you for uh, your attention, and if you have questions. Thank you.